a SARS-like virus which has infected hundreds in China. The number of cases soaring just now today. now reached the United States. Thousand people have been told to self-quarantine. Most of the country are looking more like ghost towns. The great shutdown of 2020 is underway. Now to a dire warning about climate change. Experts say that we have until 2030 to avoid catastrophe. Tonight, the UN has sounded the alarm about a different existential crisis. What is happening to our planet? Crime has been spiking in many parts of the country. Spike in brazen and sometimes deadly robberies. Criminals released early, putting you and your family in danger. Seattle is the only city in the state of Washington where it will soon be legal to use hard drugs in public. Meanwhile, Signature Bank marks the third largest bank failure in U.S. history. This morning, the government is deploying emergency measures to stop a potential banking crisis. Prices continue just to skyrocket. Here at home, inflation sticker shock is hitting millions of Americans hard. We never want a serious crisis to go to waste. I warned you, America. I've been calling out the Great Reset now for over a year. The threat that it poses is incomparable to anything I have seen. I warned you. I showed you exactly what they were doing, the sinister plan and the excuses that they gave us along the way to enact their blueprint for total control. I see the need for action. I see the need for a great reset. But the Great Reset was just their starting point, a launching pad for global elites to achieve their great narrative. We're in phase two now, with a world changing faster than we've ever seen before. Change fueled by a digital revolution. And those global elites, the politicians, the business executives, the World Economic Forum, sociopaths, are working in overdrive to make a plan for the uncertain future. They're making a plan for your life without your consent. And that plan is more dystopian than you could ever imagine. Last year I warned you, so this year I will show you. I will show you what's in store for all of us if the Great Reset Phase 2 is successful. I'll show you what's next for your life if you don't take a stand now. Tonight, your dark future. Uncovering the Great Reset's terrifying next phase. Hello, America, and welcome to the program. I know it's meme territory at this point to say this, but we face possibly the most consequential election in modern history, not just for America, but the world. The globalist design to completely restructure human society began a massive escalation after Joe Biden was elected president. And people like you and me and those that value things like freedom, opportunity, the Bill of Rights, lose in this new society. The content of tonight's program has been deemed dangerous by the mainstream media, Silicon Valley, and those members of the World Economic Forum. Believe it or not, before this broadcast, we spoke to our YouTube representative, and they told us that this special will very likely become demonetized if not erased. Demonetized only means we will not make any money on this, and these are very expensive specials, but this information is worth every dime we might lose. It's worth the gamble. I've sat down recently with world leaders, and they have said this next phase, there's three of them, this next phase, is the phase that if we don't not just stop the bad guys, if we don't educate our neighbors, if people do not wake up and choose a different path, freedom and opportunity will be lost the world over. If you're a Blaze TV subscriber, thank you. You allow us to get the truth out there even when big tech tries to stop us. So if for any reason we do get a strike on our channel, lose this, and you lose this special, uh, you can find the Blaze TV content. You use the promo code will not be censored for 30 bucks off an annual subscription to Blaze TV. All right. As you saw in the opening, I 
I've been warning about the Great Reset for years now, three, four years. I wrote this book and, well, they're going to do it anyway. I'm not supposed to say the name of it, believe it or not. That's one of the rules of being kicked off of YouTube by saying the name, The Great Reset. I wrote this as an explainer about what was being pushed. I didn't know if anyone would read it, honestly. Uh, and I really, truly believe this is not me saying this. Um, I think this was Time Magazine uh, that said it was me. And what's the guy, uh, the funny hippie dude from England? Yeah, Russell Brand. That it was Russell Brand and Glenn Beck that made ESG untouchable. Oh, were that only true. But that's pretty much it. And you, you are key to making sure this information gets out. So I printed this book telling you about all of the national leaders that were involved from Justin Trudeau to Joe Biden, even the corporate uh, corporations and the banks and big finance showed you all of this. And while people like me and a few others were trying to raise warning, we were bombarded with things like this. What is the Great Reset and how did it get hijacked by conspiracy theories? The mainstream media ran cover, even moderated the World Economic Forum conferences. It was unbelievable. I put, I don't even know, 50 pages of footnotes, maybe 25 pages of footnotes, a lot of footnotes in the back, because there are a lot of things that are being said that are not true. It's disinformation. But I wanted to make sure that you could go to the source and look it up yourself, and not from my point of view, but from their own words. We tried to cut through all the misdirection and provide an easy to understand description of what our leaders were starting to organize and prepare for. Well, their preparations are now complete. They are now moving toward a secondary stage. The final stage, maybe, we might have, we might have more to come, but it's in a very short period of time. The advancements in technology are the only things they are waiting for and it's coming fast and furious. Once they do arrive, so does our dark future. Dark Future is the name of the follow-up book that has been released this week. If The Great Reset was the explainer book, Dark Future is the warning. You don't have to read one to get the other, but it would maybe help. But if you know the basics of ESG, this tells you exactly the policies that are being pushed by the governments all over the world, as well as the technological advancements that are being pursued to ensure this dystopian society is designed the way these global elites want it to be. Now consider what I just said. Advancements in technology are coming out right now that will either benefit humans or enslave them. I am a huge fan of technology. I have been reading Ray Kurzweil since the 1990s. I have been reading futurists and marveling at the technology. I remember my producer said to me once, it was like 96 or 97. I said, there's not gonna be a must-see Thursday night TV on NBC. NBC won't really exist the way we think of it now. There will just be a download time and day for your shows. And you'll be able to watch them at any time. He looked at me like I was insane. I also said by 2030, there is coming a time where we will have to question everything, including the meaning of life and death. Well, we haven't started. And now others are making the decisions for us. Where we sit right now, Darth Vader and Palpatine are the only ones trying to figure out how to design society from it. Have you felt like everything's in chaos? Like nothing really works? Well, that's because the world is changing, but unlike ever before. 
Don't worry. All these changes that Palpatine is, is suggesting, they'll be to the, your benefit, of course. As Palpatine said, for a safe and secure society. My book, Dark Future, is an attempt to get these conversations going. You first have to be informed on what is coming. We have, we have A, a lot more information. This is the second book, but there's also about 100 pages, I think, of footnotes. There isn't one word in this book that hasn't been checked and rechecked and sourced to the original source. So you decide who's telling you the truth and who's not. There is one heck of an operation, a global operation, to make sure that we stay in the dark. They do not, they're buying time at this point. They know you are kind of on it. They know that they're running out of time, but so are we. All they're doing is stalling. Like, we're gonna take away your gas stoves because it's bad for your children. What? We don't want our gas stove. That's a conspiracy theory. Who said that? Nobody's taking away your gas stoves. To now in their own brochures, they tell us that gas stoves are going away. Everything will be electric. Electricity is the new thing. We don't have the infrastructure. We don't have the power lines to run that much electricity through it. But nobody's talking about that. They're only talking about conspiracy theories. So why would they destroy everything? Well, they're not. They're just going to impoverish you. They don't want you to know what is coming because they know, at least in America, if they design the future and you don't understand it, you'll take it. If you do understand it, you will stand up. And I think America's alone in the fight, but it's happening all over the world. Have you seen the recent attacks on Ron DeSantis after he announced his run for president? They called his message a campaign run on fringe issues. This article called it, quote, online campaign message. They said his message focused, and I quote, on fringe topics only those deep in the internet trenches seem to care about. And if they you know, would go on to list these things, you know, that are online and fringe issues, they say, and I quote, central bank digital currency. They go on to say the gripe is that CBDCs might pose a privacy concern and that could be used as a form of control. Well, it kind of seems like a big deal. And seeing that I have the Treasury and the Fed and their reports and their statements saying we're moving to CBDC and it's happening already around the world, it doesn't seem like a conspiracy theory. And it kind of seems like a big deal. Does it to you? Now, isn't it odd that the media is trying to downplay these concerns? Next, they list ESG as one of those fringe issues. If you happen to read The Great Reset, my last book, you know that ESG is a giant reinforcement mechanism. It was described to me when I was over in uh, Great Britain uh, by a scholar over there as Glenn. It's China. Do you want to live like the Chinese? I do not. If you want to change us to a Chinese system, then let's have that conversation openly. All ESG is is a mechanism to coerce companies and then have the companies and the governments and all of the radicals coerce you, the private citizen, into compliance. The metrics of ESG can be changed at any time and on any whim. It is pulling the government and big business into a partnership that is best described as 21st century fascism. Forget about the Holocaust for now when I say fascism. What is the definition of fascism? Public private partnership. The government working with industry, dictating how things will go. You can own anything until you disagree with the government, then 
They'll put you out, you'll be canceled, and someone else will fill your role. That's the way it works in China. That's not a fringe issue. But they go on. Gain-of-function research and mRNA vaccines. Translation, Big Pharma and the unholy alliance with the government. You cannot question it. Just do what you're told. After all, they are the experts. They are the scientists. If they say lock down, wear a mask, take your Soma, do it. Comply and shut up. You'll understand why that's so important in the next few minutes. And the last issue they mention as a fringe element is the woke military. Don't ask questions. It's the most powerful military in the world that has always answered to the Constitution. It has never, that I know of, in America been used as a political force. It's the most powerful thing that's ever existed in the world. And now it is a political arm of the radical left. Comply and shut up. Do any of these issues, I don't care who you voted for, do they concern you? If you happen to be a liberal and Donald Trump was doing this, you'd have a problem, right? They, they are fringe for your family and friends. Who's telling you the truth and who is not? Because those don't sound like fringe issues. You know that they are important if they're true. You see how they can become very bad if they're true. Despite the global attempt to try to sweep everything under the rug and keep you in the dark, you, like me, are concerned and aware. You have to know what is coming. You can find a lot more in detail in Dark Future. It became available yesterday. You can order it on Amazon, anywhere else you get your books. But remember, just like everything I'm going to show you tonight, unless you own the hardbound, I, I don't really care. In fact, I make more money if you buy the audio, and the audio version is very funny and good because somebody genius did it. Anyway, um, uh, I make more money if you buy the book, okay? Or, I mean, I'm sorry, buy the audio only. You can buy that. That's great. Get a hardbound. I don't care if it's hardbound or soft cover. Have it yourself. Remember, you don't own what you buy on the internet in a digital fashion. That can be removed at any time. You will see the reality of that by the end of the program. The rest of tonight's show is a quick preview um, of what is in the book that I think you need to know. It's a warning of the future that is currently been designed and now being executed. So what are we really looking at? We are looking at major societal change and societal change that is about to take place, the likes of which we have seen only three times in the past 300 years. It's an industrial revolution, but so much more. The first industrial revolution came, we were all pretty much farmers. You know, we stayed local in our own little communities. You know, if you wanted to go make a pilgrimage, you know, you could go to the next town if you wanted. There was no mass anything until in England they discovered the steam engine. The steam engine changed the entire world. And not only did society completely flip upside down, but a new country arose in America. And a government fell in Europe after a bloody French revolution. This industrial revolution changed the world. But it took a long time before it really felt all of its effects. Just because they invented the steam engine in 1760, it wasn't like a lot of people were losing their jobs in 1762 or 1770, okay? It took time, but then nobody had to plow with a horse. Nobody had to go pick the cotton because you had the cotton gin. You had a world that was completely different. And more importantly, you started to have industrial centers in cities. People would go to work in giant factories. 
That didn't happen before the steam engine was invented. But that took about 120 years to get to that point. The second industrial revolution began in the 19th century. This is where we really change things again. New technology that um, provided for mass production, the distri distribution of oil, electricity, and steel. We didn't have any skyscrapers. We didn't have buildings that were 12 stories tall until we changed steel. We made steel and we could make it in great numbers. And then you got to invent the the uh, elevator, society again flipped upside down. This was a completely different era than this. So first, second. Now, a lot of people will say the third revolution, uh, and third industrial uh, revolution ushered in the digital era and maybe they'd put it in the 1990s. But how did Germany round up all of the Jews so quickly? How could they go out on one night and make sure they got every address of, of every possible Jew they could round up? IBM. Don't believe me, read IBM, Holocaust and IBM, or IBM and the Holocaust. Well documented. It was the punch card. They were freaks about making sure they dotted every I and crossed every T. They were freaks about information. And IBM gave them that ability to change the world quickly. Then right after that, you have the digital era because you're, you're sending satellites up into space in the 1950s. You have television. All of a sudden, we're in this information age. That changes everything, yet... It's not that different than really, I mean, you, 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 your life was more complex in, in, 19, or in 1880 than it was, or more difficult than it was in 1940. Most people didn't have electricity in, in 1910. By the time 1930 came, a lot of people, more than half of America had electricity. By the time we hit 1940, pretty much everybody has electricity. So you have the first, the second, and I think this second one kind of goes into here, maybe someplace here into the 90s, because you get the tech revolution uh, that, that uh, brought us personal computers the internet and smartphones. Our life in 1990 was not the same as it was, uh, let's say in 2001, but it was still recognizable. So you have this. The next change starts really here with the iPhone, but it's only one thing. The iPhone changed everything. One invention changed everything. No more record stores, uh, no more beepers. Everyone has one. You can watch television in a completely different way. All of this, all of this, one invention changed that. We are now here. And we are at the doorstep, if you will, of the fourth industrial revolution, the fourth one. The World Economic Forum stated that the fourth industrial revolution, quote, represents a fundamental change in the way we live, work, and relate to one another. It is a new chapter in human development enabled by extraordinary technological advances, commensurate with those of the first, second, and third industrial revolutions. So what does that mean? What does that mean? That means that all of the change from here to here. I don't want to live in the 1950s, let alone the 1760s. All of this change is coming right there. All of this combined in the next seven 
years. Now, they don't want to talk about this because you'll freak out. I believe the American people are a little stronger than that. We are the people that won the Second World War. We, we are amazing when we set our mind to it. They don't want us asking questions. They are the only ones making preparations while they design how we live our lives in this brave new world. I was just in England and I really understood things so clearly there. You don't have, forget about freedom, because what does that word mean anymore? People over in England think they're free, but they don't think they have the opportunities that you have. Why? Well, I walk around the White House and I see it, you know, on TV and I'm like, hey, son, someday you can live there. OK, I don't No British person has ever said, you know what, someday you could be in Buckingham Palace unless you're a servant. You can't reach that. The opportunities are gone. What they're doing is putting select people in castles and making you and me a serf. They will own it. You will just be in their world. Don't get in the way. So what does the design actually look like? Well, I'll show you when we come back. I want to show you a clip from MSNBC that is either an example of ignorance on a scale that even MSNBC should be embarrassed about or misdirection and misinformation that the old Soviet KGB would have been jealous of. Watch. If you were to listen to Ron DeSantis' launch with Elon Musk on Twitter, which a lot of you couldn't, but if you could find a way to get on there, um, you would hear nothing but just like weird acronyms, ESG, DEI, CBDCs. Do you even know what the CBDC is? That one I don't know. All I right. On the yeah, other two. Exactly. So that's a, a, a digital currency thing that they think is going to be like a rival to Bitcoin. First of all, none of you should be on TV if that's what you think. And if you don't know what it is, you shouldn't be on TV. You are not qualified to talk about the things that are happening if you don't even know what a CBDC is. The average American, sure, not you on TV. If this is just ignorance and incompetence, it's staggering. The claim they have no clue as to what a central bank digital currency is. The single attempt of an explanation was, uh, it's a, a rival of Bitcoin. No, it's not. That's the problem. With CBDC, there would be no Bitcoin. Bitcoin offers a path outside of the Federal Reserve and its manipulation of currency. A currency outside of the financial surveillance. Okay, that's Bitcoin. CBDC eliminates all of that and puts the Fed in control of everything, all information, all of your money, buying and selling, manipulating it, telling you what value, what you can and cannot buy. Now, I don't, I don't buy that. No one at that desk knew what a CBDC was. If so, if that's the truth, good God, America, we're in trouble. Okay, I think they know exactly what it is and that it is be going to be used in the future. Here's another example of the world that they advocate for. Canadian truckers, they rose up in historic numbers to protest vaccine mandates. They stood up to their authoritarian government and donations began flooding in to keep them going. But dissent cannot be tolerated in this new world order. You can march and burn down cities, but the Canadian government froze all of the funding for being peaceful. Do you think anyone at that MSNBC table has a problem with any of this? The people pushing Build Back Better, ESG, and definitely the Great Reset with its CBDC, don't have a problem with this. Digital bank, central bank digital currency makes that easy because they already have control. 
They don't even have to go through the banks. They just do it. I go through all of the dangers of a CBDC in my book, Dark Future, but it doesn't stop there. Get as educated as you can on this. Do not take a word of this as gospel until you look the footnotes up and judge for yourself. You have to become an expert. Our country is at stake. Our lives, our fortunes, our sacred honor. Our precious time that we have, we must use it to educate ourselves and others. We are way behind on the power curve. This is a poll from the Cato Institute. It shows that 72% of those polled were not familiar at all with what a CBDC would allow the Fed to do. 70% of our nation. We cannot survive if we're this uneducated. But when they were presented with what a Fed-controlled digital currency could do, they opposed it nearly everywhere across the board. About a year ago, I told you about the CBDC initiative that was being conducted by the Boston Fed and MIT called Project Hamilton. That's been complete now. Uh, it was considered a huge success. Check out this from their report. Quote, after the white paper and code were released, Project Hamilton researchers added functionality to open CBDC, for instance, programmability and audit capabilities. Well, what does that mean? Programmability? Well, that means you can program your money to sunset. You can program your money to not buy certain products. You want to subscribe to the Blaze if the only currency is CBDC and the government decides we're a place of disinformation, you will not be able to send your money to us, which puts us completely out of business. You can want it all you want, but you cannot use your money. Do you want to support a Canadian trucker? Do you want to buy a gun? Do you want to invest in fossil fuels? Do you want to fill your tank? Well, that can all be turned off. Now, audit capabilities, that means spying on what you use your money on. Now, normally I would say, well, I don't care because I'm not buying anything illegal. But what does that mean anymore? It's not, you're not speaking out. You're following the Constitution. But you will be canceled and your life will be destroyed for following the Constitution. Think about it this way. Gas prices go up. They need to control inflation. Well, that's too many dollars pay, uh, chasing too few products. So there's, there's, there's not enough gas. How do you solve the inflation? You just say, you people can no longer buy gas. You're buying too much gas, so you know what? You're not essential. You don't buy gas, so you don't have a car. Now, did you just buy a gas stove? Or did you, did you use too much electricity? Just turn off their money until they learn their place. This is what is coming, and over half the country doesn't even know what a CBDC is. I would bet that over half of the GOP knows even less. There are a few Republicans that are trying to introduce bills to stop this, but others have introduced a bill that would allow a government contractor to run a digital currency. Are you serious? Have you not learned your lesson from the Fed? Are these Republicans ignorant or are they agents of Davos? Because this is exactly how the Great Reset operates. It, how it, it's how it skirts the Constitution, by creating public-private partnerships, enabling a 21st century fascism. Let me show you what is happening right now. This is our story. This is how we got here. Okay, all of the technological change, this is our story. But have you noticed that our story is being erased, the American story? Well, don't worry, because there's a new story coming. It's called The Great Narrative. It's their narrative of what life happened. Did you know that during the French Revolution, one of the first things they did was get rid of all the calendars? 
Did you know they declared that year of the revolution of the uh, revolution as year zero? Nothing happened before the revolution. They were going to rewrite everything and move forward. Okay, that's what's happening here. All the things that you thought you knew, lies. Okay, they've reimagined it. Now they're giving you the new narrative. So let me show you the plan or their design. The elites in Davos, the governments all over the world, envision a future where big government and big uh, corporations control everything. Everything from the farmer who is involved in food production to the guy who picks it up in his truck to the guy who takes it to the cannery to the cannery itself to the next trucking agency to take it to your grocery store to the grocery store. Everything in food production and I am quoting them from seed to fork. So they control food production food consumption you will eat what they say is okay to eat. Uh, the, uh, the products you need, you can get those, the, the services and the products you need. This one kills me because, uh, w wait a minute, what, is, what do you mean by the products we need? And we're a country of wants, and that's so bad. But you know who created that? Woodrow frickin' Wilson with uh, Edward Bernays. Edward Bernays, his quote is, during the Wilson administration, the problem with this country is we're a country of needs and not a country of wants. We need advertising to make us a country of wants. Well, you got your wish. Isn't this great? Now, without talking to us at all, you're just going to shut things off. By the way, in... England, the transportation industry, shipping, will be at zero, zero by 2050. That goes into products that you need, travel, cars. You're not going to own a car. It'll be a fleet, I guarantee you. And who do I get that from? Eight years ago, from the head, the um, head of, uh, which was it, uh, Ford, I think, the Ford Motor Company, the, the chairman of the board told me that. Uh, cars aren't going to be like anything you think of in 2030. We're going to be making fleets. And you just call a car. Your energy, your air travel. Do you know that they're, they're now starting to uh, tell people which airports are going to be closed? There will only be two airports in Great Britain. They're ahead of us. Two. They're just eliminating the other ones. But I guarantee you they are not eliminating the private airports, uh, energy, services, things that you rent, your daycare. You, you, you're not going to have a say in any of this. You, education, privacy, and private property. All of that is the plan. Now, here's how they do it. It's control over every aspect of your life. They identify all of the roadblocks for their full takeover. Things like paper money, privately held farm and ranch land, home ownership, private business, and cheap, reliable energy. So what do they do? Well, the next step is they call for trillions of dollars in government-run social, economic, and welfare programs. Now, this, this is crazy. Do you remember when Bill Clinton said, the era of big government is over? He was right. The era of huge government is now here. They are forming public-private partnerships between governments and big, giant corporations to change the social norms, the things we want, the things that we believe, the things that we say or do. And they do it through DEI, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and ESG, through energy production, consumption, food production, through the Green New Deal and Build Back Better. That's what's happening now. You think you, Obamacare. You know, there is a little thing in there that I pointed out in about 2008 or nine. Uh, the uh, complete live system where you were gonna get help from medicine, you know, when you're prime. 
you know, between 16 and 40, once you hit 40, kind of, once you hit 55, 60, you get really nothing. And before 16, if you're a baby, you get nothing. That only kicks in, this was their argument, Glenn Peck is such a conspiracy theory, that only kicks in if there's shortages. Oh, well in America, we'll never have shortages. Except we now do. Third, I've, this was coercion, but I, I want to talk to you about something that I said uh, when we were here. Cass Sunstein, he wrote the book, Nudge. Nudge was to just push you a little bit, put the French fries out of your sight. So you'd have to ask for it and think about it. Okay, that's a nudge. The next thing is shove. We're about the end of that where they've shoved you around and shoved you around and silenced as many people as they possibly can. There's still more left in this, but not a lot of gas in that tank. The next one is round them up, put them in jail, or shoot them. That's just historically speaking. I'm sure it's completely different all over the world now, this time. So this is ESG, the whole cancel culture, weaponized government. Uh, and family against family. How many families are turning on each other? People, neighbors. The thing that made America truly remarkable was our kind of innocence. We trusted people, and maybe we shouldn't have, but we did, we trusted people. Nobody does that in Europe because they've had the KGB and everything like it. They've been turning people in, their neighbors in over and over again. Don't trust people. That's about to change in America, and it's not a good change. Finally, they begin prepping and building our new society based on the technology that most of us don't even know about. Central bank digital currency is just one of the emerging technological advances that they have big plans for. They will control what you buy. They will monitor your activity. When you get to quantum computing, once we hit a certain number of qubits, and they keep changing the number of qubits, you will not have any codes. Nothing will be secure. It's almost like in the Bible where it talks about there will be no secrets, everything will be screamed from the, the rooftops. Yeah, it, it's coming with quantum computing. The end of death. Not because, let me give you this. I just went, I've been reading about it for about four years. I was just in England and I saw a show with my family called The Abba Experience. Uh, don't hate me, but I love Abba and so does every member of the family. So we went and uh, it's a show with Abba, except they're not there, okay? They're holograms. And I'm a lover of technology. I love new tech. I've been watching hologram technology for quite a while. Um, wildly expensive and difficult and pretty good. Then I went to see the ABBA experience. You won't find real, uh, real videos deeply about this because uh, they want you to experience it yourself. I will tell you, my daughter, who did not know they weren't real, when mom said, Cheyenne, do you think they look real? She said, what are you talking about? She said, do they look real? She said, what do you mean? She said, they're holograms. She had no idea, and I can, it's one of the best experiences I've ever had in a concert. And my son, who is now 18, said to me, Dad, this is both thrilling and terrifying at the same time. It is the collapse of reality. It's the collapse of death. They recorded it in their 80-year-old selves, and it took them five months to do it. The computer de-aged them, put them in 70s clothing, put them on stage together, singing their songs based on the tracks. And you wouldn't know. All of these things, the metaverse, AI, None of this is in and of itself bad. None of this in and of itself is a conspiracy theory.
In fact, we got to stop talking about conspiracy theories. It's, it is an open conspiracy. It's just a bunch of people getting together thinking, we know what's best, let's just get it done. People are going to get in our way. For years, the World Economic Forum wrote about how they were designing our future. I mean, I was just at the London School of Economics, which is the home ground of George Soros. They have a, a, a world, a globe, as in the center court of the university, and it's upside down. They openly talk about redesigning and turning everything upside down. They're open about it. They have shown us in great detail what our dark future will look like. And I'm going to show you exactly what it looks like in their own words, as well as the technology that has already arrived to make all of it possible. Profound change is coming. You must be aware, educate yourself and your family. Next. By the way, um, thank you to Blaze supporters for making this commercial free possible. Everything that I'm about to show you is not science fiction. It is all part of a design for our future. By the way, AI is getting so scary. What is everybody saying? The government needs to regulate. Who's going to write that regulation? Because these boobs in Washington have no idea, no idea about technology, let alone the United Nations. You know who's doing it? Places like the World Economic Forum, in line with places like Google. They're the ones writing it. Do you think it has power against them or for them? And do you think it joins the two or makes that less likely? As I said earlier, Palpatine and Darth Vader are the only ones talking about this uh, stuff. And they're about a decade ahead of us. Let me show you an article that was written in 2016. Welcome to 2030. I own nothing. I have no privacy. And life has never been better. It was written by a young global leader of the World Economic Forum just before their annual World Economic Forum conference. I find the date that it was published kind of hilarious, actually. It came out in Forbes on November 10th, 2016. It must have been written b weeks before the hubris of the World Economic Forum. Uh, and what makes it so funny is they're serious and they think you'll agree. The 2015 Paris Agreement was marching toward Hillary Clinton. It was all guaranteed. She was going to get us back into the accords. Um, she was going to be elected. But two days before this was published, Donald Trump became president. The Republicans grabbed both the House and the Senate. Their dystopian design for our future was delayed. But I don't think Donald Trump or anybody else at the time, I didn't, knew about any of this stuff. And it seemed crazy. But we saw the Paris Accords, when we got out of the Paris Accords, how they went crazy. They squealed like stuck pigs. And you're like, what is the deal? It's not that big of a deal, is it? Oh, yes, it is. But it would take coronavirus to put them back on track. I go through this article in more detail in the book, Dark Future, but I want to show you some of the highlights. Quote, welcome to the year 2030. Welcome to my city, or should I say our city? Because I don't own anything. I don't own a car. I don't own a house. I don't own any appliances or any clothing. Now, let me ask you something. When you see government provided housing, is that the place that you think of where Everybody who doesn't own anything in that takes really super great care of it? Or does it mean nothing because they have nothing in it? Ah, I'm sure they figured all that out. What the author is talking about is the WEF design for how people like you and me will live. And they're called smart cities. And the World Economic Forum is gathering a smart city alliance to make this transformation all over the world. 
In 2021, the WEF transitioned from the Great Reset to something called the Great Narrative. And they made the announcement in Dubai. Klaus Schwab was like this weird little bald Nazi that's giddy and happy all the time. He's like, this is fabulous. The United Arab Emirates, they're the champion of what's to come. Have you ever been to the UAE? I mean, sure, it's nice if you like 170 degree summers. Um, but using that as the example doesn't seem like something where people love opportunity and freedom would be modeling. You always hear these people talk about democracy, democracy. Our democracy is at stake. The UAE must be a poster child for democracy, right? Yeah, not so much. Freedom House rates the UAE officially not free. It is an authoritarian, centrally planned government. And that is exactly why the WEF loves it so much. It is the perfect launch point for their unholy alliance between big tech and government because the people don't have any say. Dubai is probably the most centrally planned city in the world. They're incorporating advancements in artificial intelligence, in blockchain, in robotics to design the smart city of the future. And that's great unless it curbs opportunity for everybody. In 2020, at the uh, World Expo, it was held in Dubai. It was the first time this had happened in an Arab country. The location of the Expo remains to this day, and it has been testing ground for what you might have heard called a 15-minute city. Watch this. The business community will enjoy a specially curated ecosystem boasting 5G and IoT technologies. Expo City is going to be a smart city, right? Uh, so it's like a major playground for different AI-related technologies, including computer vision, natural language processing, machine learning, and you know, human in, uh, human computer interaction. All these technologies can be used in a smart city scenario. Uh, so uh, that's why you know, a lot of uh, uh, high, uh, highly advanced uh, technological companies are going to uh, be based at uh, the Expo City to collaborate with uh, uh, the Expo City and uh, contribute to the development. Those who choose to make Expo Village their home will get to live and work in the UA's first 15-minute city, with neighborhoods linked by pedestrian walkways and autonomous vehicle routes. Hmm. That's fantastic. Everything you need within 15 minutes, why go? any further. You know, this is kind of what Walt Disney was trying to do with Epcot when it was just an idea of an experimental prototype city of tomorrow. Except, what did he do? He was going to partner with Ford and all of the big companies, but he demanded that the government was held at bay. That's what Ron DeSantis just canceled. All of these special deals where they didn't ha even, did you know up until recently, they didn't have to have an inspector come in and inspect any building, any ride? Ah, just trust them with it. Okay, that's because Walt Disney was going to do that, but he did not want the government involved at all. This is being designed by governments. It's so great that even COP28 is being held right there in this 15-minute city. I was just in a 15-minute city in Scotland. It's a whole new world. All of the biggest leaders in the world will be in Dubai, and they are the only ones discussing these things. We haven't even begun. Now, are these fringe or online-only issues for you? They are examining things like AI, 5G, digital currencies, robotic uh, uh, automation to change, in their words, the way everyone lives. What are we doing? Are we having an in-depth discussion on whether to send Ukraine more weapons? No, we can't even do that. Are we engaging in a uh, an intense debate on the debt ceiling or taxes or anything? No, we're not even doing that. We're calling each other names. 
while others are planning your children and your future. Meanwhile, the World Economic Forum pulling in all of the leaders of the world and scooping up, quote, top thinkers from a variety of geographies and disciplines, including futurists, scientists, and philosophers. Perfect to completely upend society. And we haven't even begun. We're starting to see what the author of that Forbes article called Our City. China's already doing it. Neighborhoods are separated by walls. The resident, to leave their district, they have to have their face scanned and logged. If you're not approved, you're not leaving your little 15-minute city. Checkpoints are at every gate. If it's working there, why do you think anyone who is so crazy with power that they would deny all of this and not include you is going to open the gates? We're not going to have gates here. If you're an undesirable, maybe you've logged on um, line and you've, you've even read a social media post, you know, or you've been too close with somebody with a virus, you don't get out. Okay. There's no way any of this could happen. No way. Isn't that what we said when they said 15, uh, 15 days to flatten the curve? Well, they'll never. I mean, I can't imagine that. They're never. America won't put up with it. Really? We taught them an incredible lesson. I contend we're already seeing this happen. And not only is hardly anyone doing anything, no one will even talk about it. Do you know a few weeks ago there was a story about Amazon? Uh, they had the whole smart house. Okay, Everything was controlled by Amazon. By the way, you don't own any of that crap. They own you. So everything's going on. Guy comes from Amazon delivery to deliver a package. Ding dong, they have the smart uh, doorbell. Has a camera, records everything, and can even answer. This guy had it uh, programmed to say, hello, uh, how can I help you? The driver, assign only the best intentions. The driver has headphones in. He thinks he hears the person speaking, which is a robot, calling him a racial slur. So he gets off the porch and goes to his truck. He calls uh, Amazon and complains, this person at this address just called me. Amazon shuts down the person's smart house, completely cuts it off for a week. For a week. It took that long for the homeowner to get a hold of someone at Amazon and to say, if you'll look at the video, none of that stuff happened. Did you even hear that story? For all of this to make an appearance on Main Street USA, uh, they only need a few things. And one of them at the top of the list is you not talking about it or knowing about it or knowing not this part of the book, but this part, the footnotes, knowing the actual facts. For them, they need us just to remain stupid and they need just a few more advancements in technology, things like AI, 5G, CBDC. Second, there would need to be a deep public-private partnership uh, between governments and corporations. And third, there would need to be corresponding policies from Washington, D.C. to make all of this come together. If you look at that list, there are check marks on all three. All three of those things either already happen, happened or are currently happening right now. And I'll show you when we come back. I want to go back to that article from the World Economic Forum. Quote, I don't own anything. I don't own a car. I don't own a house. I don't own any appliances or any clothes. Have you tried to buy a house recently? Home ownership for new buyers, especially younger buyers, harder than ever before. 
Home affordability is worse now than at any point during the lead up to the 2008 housing bubble. Let me just point out something. We had overbuilt in 2008 and then everybody got a bailout. And then those same people decided not to build. So when we got back on our feet, we wanted to buy houses. Everything went through the roof. Remember what I said earlier on. What is needed to usher in this brave new world, new tech, private, public partnerships, and corresponding policies. Interest rates continue to rise. And yet the government's spending all the money, but the interest rates are rising to suck your money back into the system. But they're spending far more than they can suck in. Okay, well, so that's not doing anything except pushing you further into debt. This means mortgage payments are way too high for most buyers. That's policy. But I did say most buyers, because let's look at the public-private partnerships. The Blackstone Group is an investment firm with ties to the World Economic Forum. They have been buying up residential homes like candy. They're still doing it. They made a $6 billion investment to buy up homes in 2021. In 2021, do you remember? Uh, they were just going into whole neighborhoods and trying to buy new neighborhood built. We'll buy all of it. And the local people were like, wait, I don't, I, what? And they would pay more. Why would they do that? Another near $6 billion of purchases happened with apartments in 2022 and a record $50 billion to purchase even more homes just late August of last year. Echoing the World Economic Forum article, more people are renting today than any point in the last half a century. They say that like, we want to rent. No, most people don't. Three million households that make over $150,000 a year are also choosing to rent over ownership. Now, why is ownership so important? Well, maybe in other countries it's not, but private property and ownership is what the United States of America was built on. You cannot, you know, again, I'll go back to Windsor Castle. I'm standing there and I'm like, you can't get this kind of wealth. There's nothing I could create or do that would have this kind of wealth and power. Bezos doesn't have that kind of wealth and power. Huh. When we first started the country, they knew serfs don't own land unless you're given that land by the king. Ownership. How do you create wealth? Home ownership. That's the economic engine for your, for your family, for your children, for yourself. The article mentions not owning a car. It says, quote, we could call a driverless vehicle. Autonomous driving services are beginning to launch in cities around the country. Lyft, the competitor to Uber, is one of them. Another, Waymo, launched in Los Angeles earlier this year. While this technology sounds really exciting, nobody is talking about the economic power households will lose when they no longer own their own vehicles. They don't talk about the massive job loss. Business Insider projects four million jobs could be wiped out. And this is before 2030. But they also add in, quote, but a new report says the upside will easily be worth it. Hmm, okay, have the experts ever been wrong? The U.S. has nearly two million truck drivers. Will it be easily worth it for them? And what about the over one million delivery truck drivers? The 366,000 bus drivers. Again, I go back to London. They're introducing self-driving buses in the next year or two. I even in, mentioned the taxi and chauffeur drivers. How are they going to make a living? Well, the chauffeurs will be able to take them to the private airport. Back to the WEF article. When they say you will own nothing, they mean nothing. Quote, I don't own any appliances or clothes, the necessary uh, kitchen equipment is delivered at my door when I need it. Wow, that's 
fabulous. Sound ridiculous? Electronics and appliance rental has gradually been increasing since around 2005, but it skyrocketed after the pandemic. Hmm. More people are choosing, more than ever, to rent things now rather than to own. And remember how this works. Policy decisions will come down from the top, kind of like this. New York recently became the first state to ban gas stoves. But remember, that's a conspiracy theory, right? Then, after the policies are handed down from the government, their private partners suddenly emerge with all of the answers. Earlier, I showed you that graph of electronics and appliance rental companies booming. Uh, I wonder which team they play for. As of 2021, Rent-A-Center began issuing the annual sustainability report, complete with a fully developed and implemented ESG strategy. I bet they have an amazing ESG score. In our dark future, everything you once considered a product that you would own will now be a service. And there is something to ownership. Again, I go back to the book. Please, I make more money if you buy the digital book. Buy the paper book. Please, you own this. Digital, they can take away at any time. You don't own it. Everything will be a service, even clothing, as they mentioned in the article. Clothing re uh, rental sites are popping up all over the Internet. All of these developments seem benign when you look at them as disconnected. And when you look at them with, well, things are always going to be like this. But when you consider the design that's being prepared, all of it looks rather dark. Toward the end of the World Economic Forum article, things start to take a bit of a turn, kind of like this. Quote, when AI and robots took over so much of our work, we suddenly had time to eat well, sleep well, and spend time with other people. I point out, uh, if you're in within walking distance in a 15-minute city, then you can go visit those people. Yuval Harari, who's one of the big gurus uh, for the World Economic Forum and loved by all politicians, apparently, in his book, uh, about the future, he talks about, and you can find it online too, uh, on YouTube, he talks about in 2030 there will be millions, millions of useless people. What do we do with them? Well, probably going to have to drug them and keep them entertained. Oh. Well, that sounds like a very bright future. They actually tried to put a people spin suddenly out of, uh, out of work as you're going to have more time. You're going to be great. I doubt it. This reality is almost here. A recent report found that artificial intelligence will replace the equivalent of 300 million jobs. ChatGPT is already here, and it's growing stronger and more efficient every day. Check out the jobs that it will soon destroy. Coders computer programmers, software engineers, your kids going for anything to learn code. It's not an option anymore. Media jobs, advertising, technical writing, and journalism. You think the media is biased now? AI is learning to think from the radicals in Silicon Valley. We haven't seen anything yet. Paralegals and legal assistants, market research analysts, teachers, Finance jobs, stock traders, graphic designers, accountants, customer service agents. What will be left? How are we supposed to rent all of our cool new 15-minute city homes, all of our appliances and our clothes, if you don't have a job? Well, don't worry. That's where modern monetary uh, theory comes in. You just print more money. Let's go back to the article. This one is the biggest doozies yet. Quote, once in a while, I get annoyed about the fact that I have no real privacy. Nowhere I can go and not be registered. I know that somewhere everything I do, everything I think and dream is recorded. I just hope nobody will use it against me. Oh. In this case, hope is, a step, uh, is a, just a, a step away from despair. 
That doesn't sound like something you should be hopeful about. You should pretty much guarantee that. Is this the world you want to live in? Does it sound like a world designed to set you free to pursue opportunities? Or does it sound more like a world that if you play by the rules, their rules that can change at any time, and you're in the right group of people, you can maybe excel to some level, but not really ever up there. Does it sound like a, a freedom situation or an enslavement camp? That world is almost here. The choice is being made today by our silence, by our ignorance. Technology like the metaverse will one day be your sole method of ordering things online, consuming entertainment, news, everything. Apple's new Vision Pro just took dramatic step towards this technology, and it makes Facebook's meta look like a kid's toy. Are these things being built with our safety and privacy in mind? No. Once you put that headset on, it watches your eyes because it has to adjust things. As you're looking, it has to adjust, okay? As it's watching your eyes, it's tracking your eyes. If you're looking at a movie or anything else, where you look first, you might not even know, but a hot girl comes on the screen, where on her body do your eyes naturally go? Where do they go with food? Where do they go with anything? That will all be tracked, monitored, and crunched into data. They will know you better than you know you. You trust these companies that one day will control so much of your information and your daily lives that you trust them to be Boy Scouts with it? Facebook owned Instagram recently busted, housing a vast pedophile network on their platform. Now, maybe it's just me, but that doesn't seem like safety and privacy are really their top priorities. They want us consuming and addicted to their products. That's it. All the while, our houses become smart homes, and Big Brother is listening. And if you think you have nothing to hide, that's because today you may not be saying things that are politically incorrect. But tomorrow, they may change. I told you about the man, Amazon, getting his house shut down for a week after a delivery de driver said he heard a racist slur through the ring doorbell. That is your future. Now consider what happens if your personal ESG score drops too low. Or maybe you use too much electricity a month, too much water, buy a gun. These are things they can already do. But companies who are partnered with the government are also the ones working on technology and ways to stop you from doing the things they don't want you to do and make personal privacy a thing of the past. Quantum computing has the ability to render all encryption obsolete the moment it comes online. This quantum computing with AI will become a new god. And so many will bow down to worship this god. When you combine the algorithms, and quantum computing. There is no escape. No escape. You better hope that it's benevolent. Everything can be run on a quantum computer. Every answer could be found, but not by you. Because you're not big enough to ask a big enough question to warrant any time on that quantum computer. This isn't something that everyone will have. It'll be the thing that maybe the universities have if they come up with it, or the government has if they come up with it, or Google has, and they may rent out space, but do you think you're going to have space 
on the quantum computing stack? One, one algorithm that is run on a quantum computer can hack every online financial transaction that has been written since 1994. They've been able to write this algorithm in 1994. They wrote it. They're just waiting. They call it Q-Day. And the product leader for quantum computing at Microsoft said, quote, we are looking at years and not decades for this level of innovation. Similar to the WEF article I've been talking to you about tonight, they also released a video infamously claiming you will own nothing and be happy. This is how it should have gone. Watch. This is the technology and the reality. I'm going to say something that I probably shouldn't say. Um, I'm not saying this technology and what this is, is uh, the things that we have read about for millennia in scriptures and the mark of the beast and all of that stuff. I have no idea, but it certainly sounds like exactly the kind of stuff that will be used. This is reality. The people pushing the Great Reset are just waiting for these things. They're designing our future based on that technology. And the average person doesn't know about it, isn't talking about it. This is just a glimpse. You can find all of this and so much more in much more detail in the latest book called Dark Future. Pick it up today wherever you buy your books. Get a paper copy. The, the audio version's fantastic. It's really funny. And this isn't really that funny. Uh, but I did it. And buy it now. Good night.